Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is um, a video that um, I wanted to do because I did a video a while back and I talked about when somebody gets sick. And this is kind of a spin-off, if you will, from that video because um, this is a, a little bit more in depth um, from that video. This is a herbalist type of video uh, where you go in um, like, I'm not exactly sure yet what to title this. This is a, maybe when you, when is it time to call an herbalist? And um, sometimes we get sick and we can take care of it from home. And um, maybe mom comes down and she gets sick. And so that was kind of like the prefaces um, how to stock your pantry, you know, some things that you can buy from the store, so forth and so on. And um, I kind of, I think I, I pretty much took care of that. Um, I, I really wanted to, from an, from an herbal standpoint, uh, take care of some things. But, and there's some things that every household can add or take away from that mindset. But today's video, I'm gonna dive in deeper because we kind of live in a world where they're coming out with a new, uh, a new sickness. I'm gonna just leave it at that, a new sickness. Every day we watch uh, the television where they're coming out with a new sickness, a new, a new pill, a new this, a new that. And really, we don't know where to go or what to do. So, we really have to do our own research. We have to do our own um, our own homework. And for me and for my house, I do a lot of herbal um, remedies. And I buy books and I teach people from a biblical standpoint really where to go and what to do. And so today, I, um, I like to drink a lot of herbal teas. I think I've said that before because that's a liquid form. It's going to pass through my throat. It's going to go down my digestive tract, and it's going to go in my stomach. A lot of these um, things that are out there in the world because it's a breathing condition, it will go through your throat and your respiratory. We have a lot of inflammatory diseases or breathing conditions or whatever you want to call them. I don't know how to even label them anymore, but they need to go through our bodies. And when they go through our bodies like that, they sometimes will help with inflammatory, um, the inflammatories that's going on in our stomach and in our GI tract. So that's why I really like drinking herbal teas. Any herb that you come across and you, you know, might can Google it or whatever. And if it says, this is an anti-inflammatory, it's an anti-inflammatory, drink it. <laughs> If it's a bitter herb, <coughs> drink it. And, <coughs> excuse me, I really know a lot of people that say, I don't like it because it don't taste good. Put peppermint tea with it, it'll, it'll taste good, trust me. <laughs> peppermint tea is one of my favorite teas because if you, like I have mullen right here. I didn't particularly like mullen, but I put peppermint tea with it, put honey with it, I drank it, I love it. Because I, I had a need for it, but I didn't like the taste, so I put peppermint tea with it, which peppermint tea makes everything taste good. Most herbs taste blah, or if they're a bitter herb or whatever, you just gotta uh, get into the world of herbs. And if you put peppermint with it, most peppermints or mints, they taste pretty good. They have a good flavor to them. 
not all, but most. Um, <clears throat> and a little bit of honey. I don't like using sugar because sugar is not good for us, but a little bit of honey or a little bit of stevia, and it usually makes it taste pretty fantastic. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about three main herbs <clears throat> that will help us. And sometimes if you think, well, I'm not getting better. I need a little additional help. And you might need to call an herbalist. Because sometimes <clears throat> the doctors want to just push more and more antibiotics or more and more. And sometimes the pills are making you sicker. <clears throat> I'm just going to be real honest with you. I have talked to several people and they have like no money to uh, get these pills or they have broke out in rashes or not even just broke out in the rash, but the pills are making them sick. And I'm one of them. I'm allergic to most antibiotics and I'm allergic to most of the stuff that they give you. I can't even go get the prescription filled. I'm sitting there with my doctor and he's going down the list. Are you allergic to this? This is a family of this or this or that. And I'm just like, you know, I just have to go take my herbs, you know. And my doctor is like, okay, okay. <laughs> and I just need to get the blood work. And usually the blood work will tell me what family of herbs I have to go take. But, I mean, that's just how it is for some people. And it's nothing against the medical profession. It's just the medicine just doesn't work in my body. And um, <clears throat> herbs do. So without further ado, we're going to talk about um, bacterial things that happen in the body. And sometimes, you know, um, there's an herb that is really good that actually works on viruses and bacteria as well. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with my throat this morning, but it's going to get better. <laughs> Uh, just dry, I think. It's called Usna. Usnea. U S N E A. Usnea. And it is a great herb. It is a. <coughs> it's kind of up in the northern Oregon and around um, Northern America. And it's kind of a hairy, bearded type plant. A lot of people call it um, old man's beard. It um, looks like a wild, I don't have a picture of it right now, but um, <clears throat> kind of looks like a kind of fuzzy. And it's a, a lot of people, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to order it. I've seen it for um, the last year. And I kind of, I kind of equated it in my mind to another herb, and I'll talk about it here in a minute. But after doing some research and studying it, um, I kind of found out that it's got a lot more properties than what I thought. Um, the actions to this is it's an antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, anti-parasitic. Um, it helps fight cancer. It's an antiseptic, so it cleans antiviral, antiviral, anti-immunostimulant, um, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I like the fact that it is, um, helps fight cancer, that, that was really, and an anti-placenic, it's, it fights cancer in two different ways, so, and it's a, a synergetic top um, drug, which I didn't know it was in the drug family. So the um, thing that I was reading in here that um, it's kind of in the same way that mullen um, does, it fights, um, <clears throat> okay, like it, it helps in a number of ways with viruses like herpes complex or simplex, it helps uh, a tumor, it helps the Epstein-Barr virus, and it also fights 
like these cancer cells, lung, breast, um, these. Now, I want to make sure I get this right because, like, <clears throat> when you're treating, like, um, the TB infection, the GI tract, the throat, the fungal skin infections, it's resistant bronchitis and pulmonary infections. It's, it's, uh, it's caused by the gram positive bacteria um, or TB. Um, like when you have con conjunctivitis in the eye drops, you know, from the eye drops and stuff like that, it helps spot all that conjunctivitis that you get in your eyes. Okay. <clears throat> now, it, it grows nearly um, every forest in the um, upper regions, widely available on the internet. So, I should not have any trouble finding this, I pray. Um, it does very well in tinctures, and it's helpful <clears throat> with, it's just talking about the formulas, and um, it's really good in, when you put, when you use it for nasal sprays and stuff like that, so that's really helpful for me. It talks about really a lot of different information in here for me. Traditional uses of this <clears throat> talks about how you can use it for um, different areas of the body. Um, um, for bacteria infections in your body. Um, with um, the research, they've done a lot of scientific research and they have found out so many different things, how you can soak it in uh, garlic juice or make a tea out of this garlic and use that when you very first come into contact with like somebody who's had the flu. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you wanna get plenty of rest and I think that's really awesome because, you know, it heals wounds. Um, you can use it in your veterinary practice, which is, I've got a list of things that I'm writing down currently at this time. Um, things that I can use with um, pets. And so that's really kind of awesome. So we're going to move on now um, to my next let me make sure I don't want to talk about anything else. Yeah. So we're going to move on now. Um, and I don't have it currently, so I can't show you anywhere or currently right now um, anything that I have with this herb in it. But I'm going to be using it. And um, I just wanted to talk about it right now briefly. But we're going to talk about the stragglers. And I think I've mentioned astragalus before. And um, astragalus is one of those herbs that you can find. I know here in my local area, it's not hard to find. But I would, um, and I have stocked up on it. You can buy astragalus at southwestbotanicals.com and um any probably anywhere in your uh, drug stores um, or I guess I didn't want to say drug stores I'm thinking of your um, like your health food stores is what I'm thinking of but astragalus is a uh, pretty pretty well um, in your English astragalus in your Chinese astragalus um, <clears throat> it's pretty well known and I know here in the last few years, more and more people have been getting to know this. Uh, and it's used mainly, it's a root. And when I very first got it, I was like, what? You know, because it kind of looks like a tongue depressor. It's like hard shoots. It kind of looks like they shaved off 
but they've, they, they kind of shave the root and you can also get it in a powder. You can cook with it. Um, you can make um, soups and you can, you can put a couple of uh, those hard pieces in there and then of course take them out when you're done. You put it like in a little linen bag or something like that because it's meant to flavor or the medicinal property is what you're using and you're not gonna cook it soft don't get that in or in this book I found out and you could just put it in your Ross you know but um, the main thing that you're wanting to do with this is uh, excuse me is you're wanting to because it's an adaptogenic I also use it with echinacea or I just use it it's in my multivitamin my everyday multivitamin because it helps your immune system. It per, it's promoting and helping your immune system. I got it because it was recommended to me through my doctor. And my doctor was trying to tell me that, you know, um, you just you just have to make this part of your life. And I was like, okay, you know. I didn't question his authority on, on because he um, is a natural doctor and so, I know that um, I read about it and I heard about it in um, school. So, and then when he said, you know, just, you know, with the vitamins that I had already got, it was in there. And he said, you just need to take it. And I was like, I know about it, you know. So, this is echinacea and astragalus, but it's also a reshi, which is a mushroom, which helps your, um, but I take this extra when I'm not feeling 100% of myself with my daily. And then I also have, um, well, I'll talk about this tincture in a minute. But there's different ways that you can boost up your immune system and take it several times a day. If you think you are coming down with a cold or a flu, or you just need to boost your immune system, you know, there's several ways that you can boost your immune system. But anyway, um, I just took it and um, because it's an adaptogenic, it has antibacterial properties, antiviral. It's a diuretic, so if you think you have like a urinary tract infection um, and you don't want to take a tincture, because I do have a tincture also of echinacea and astragalus and elderberry, um, you can definitely take some capsules because capsules, veg, veg, vegetable capsules is the way to go. Um, like if you're going to be traveling or whatever, but it's also an immune enhancer, a stimulant, a restorative, a tonic. So, and it, it helps your T cells, um, protects your T cells in, in, a, in a great way. So... Most you can get on the internet, find all different types of uh, astragalus and just make sure it's a great company. Um, you know, and you can, like I said, uh, you can prepare a tincture for yourself. Of course, it takes four to six weeks. I usually pull it off the shelf after four weeks. But, you know, you can, you can, like, if you don't want to make a tincture for yourself, which tinctures are very inexpensive, they'll last forever. You can make a big old tincture like this and have it for a long, long time. Um, I've got echinacea in there and I have mullein and I have um, echinacea, mullein, and peppermint. <laughs> I have all that in there. That's going to last. Um, I just keep filling this one up right here and I, I've used it for over six months so I mean it can, it'll last up to five ten years because it just it just does it's not gonna go it's not gonna go rancid you know so anyway it's just up to you or you can take this or you can do a tea you know whatever you want to do so anyway the scientific research on this being an anti-inflammatory which there's that word again anti-inflammatory uh, and it says the the first research that was done on um, this, which um, I'm on the runner, 
is, um, no, we're not talking about, we're not talking about that. This is not, this one, a stragglers has no anti-inflammatory in it. This is all about antiviral, aptogenic, antibacteria, antibacteria, diuretic, enhances the function of the lungs, the spleen, and the GI tract, which is good, the GI tract. This is good for the GI tract, which it doesn't say anything about anti-inflammatory. It's hypotensive, immune-enhancing, and all that. And this just goes on to talk about the different ways that you can uh, use it and how long it's been around, so forth and so on. And I'm not gonna get into all that. It talks about the immune function and how the immune function works. And it does talk, one thing I did wanna go over, and this is really important to me, is it talks about how the clinical trials have helped people that if you have had cancer or if you're on cancer, uh, if, if you are having cancer treatments, the different ways that it helps the clinical studies that they've done for people with serious cancer problems, the, the trials that they've gone in and found, how it helps the different levels of white blood count. And I'm not going to go on and read every single thing because the patients that are undergoing chemotherapy who they have found that the white blood cell counts that if uh, um, improved significantly. The herbs that they have found, and astragalus is one of the greatest herbs that they have found that help people boost their white blood count, which you know the white blood count is the most important because they, not only do they feel better because their white blood count goes up significantly, and this is all the different uh, CD4, CD8 ratio, all these different broad uh, Im immunostimulating effects of going, uh, undergoing all the effects of chemotherapy, they start normalizing. And um, the herb has been found significantly useful in preventing and reversing the immunosuppressing from any of the related bacterial, viral, or chemical, which that is a chemical that they put in you, which is the um, the radiation and the other, all the other stuff that they use. Anyway, it says that uh, they wish they had known it, but they didn't know it. They knew all the other stuff that they were doing, but they didn't know uh, as far as the, the uh, this stuff here. So anyway, then they go on to talk about the heart disease. And I'm not going to go into all that, but I, um, the uh, astragalus helps with the heart disease. And the anti-inflammatory uh, does talk about the activity found in the pathways blocking um, the different actions, the neurological effects, and that's another reason why I take it, because the neurological effects and how it has helped me. I just, I think clearly, I, I do stuff better when I'm on a strike list. The fatigue, and it talks about hepatitis, immune enhances, it talks about how to make a broth. I mean, I just really, I really like taking, uh, taking this, I, I, I think that herbs, overall, you're gonna come out on top. Um, you're not gonna have the side effects with herbs that you are. Uh, <clears throat> you're gonna have to take something to combat the side effects of your um, RX. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go on to my last herb. This is probably one of my favorite because This last herb, I've known this herb the longest, and I have used this herb the longest, um, right beside mullein. Um, <clears throat> mullein I have had in my house the longest, and then I've had echinacea the longest. I don't know which I've had the longest, but probably peppermint, but anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> 
second age is one of those old herbs that come from the Indians way back long time ago and it's trusted and it's one of those that I do have to throw out a little warning uh, <clears throat> if you have some kind of audio immune disorder you should consult your physician you should consult your physician on all herbs but uh, <clears throat> one of these um, because it is so good I mean it's really really good herb but this uh, echinacea goes in there and just really takes over the immune system it doesn't take over but I mean it just helps the immune system <clears throat> and so if you have an audio immune disorder and you're probably on some sort of drug to help the immune system or to boost the immune system, I don't know the audio immune system uh, you are probably on some sort of drug or something so it will clash with this herb so be careful and talk to your doctor and then tell him say hey I want to take echinacea then he'll probably tell you no <laughs> so anyway just got to do your own research and talk to your doctor about that but for normal um, you know that you're not taking any other kind of um, I think uh, everything else is a, this is a safe herb for most people I mean because your immune system you're feeling tired you might be feeling weak you might be feeling like you know hey I just need a, a cup of echinacea I mean I've got echinacea right here and I usually marry it with mullein mullein and then I don't have my I don't have my peppermint out my peppermint's actually in my office in a big huge container and I just didn't feel like bringing it out here but that's usually called master the storm and I have a big huge container of tea that I've got all three of them together this is my tincture it's called master the storm master the storm is mullein echinacea and peppermint and master the storm is usually right about this time and I haven't even this has got herbs and everything all in there and it will be done um, it's probably already done <laughs> oh no that's the day I started it is on the 18th so I've got till next month on the 18th and then I'll have it all done so anyway what I will do because I have all three herbs that I do Mullen is a respiratory herb and that's really not the herb I wanted to talk about I really wanted to talk about echinacea but the reason I put echinacea in there is because this one is a lung support this one is mainly if you're fighting any bacteria infection in there and the bacteria infection is what we're talking about today and so much research has been done it's also an antiviral um, antivirals is pretty much the scientific research behind echinacea and they talk about all species of echinacea there's one that they think is a little bit stronger than the other but the pink and the purple ones are the ones that they like they say that are the strongest I use the um, the ah, da, 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 da. I just lost it the echinacea pulperia or per perea yeah that's the one that I normally end up using and I use nothing but organic and I tried to use the the one that says kosher from Southwest even though I grow it I don't have it year-round um, sometimes I do have to order it online and I use Southwest Botanicals because they use nothing but the best and so the anti um, viral activity has been found to fight against the H1N1 um, and it is also uh, HIV and influenza and it is also you know just it has great properties to help fight against the 
the most powerful viruses that they have out there today that they know of. And I mean, for me, I know every time that I have thought that I think I got the flu and I'm like, oh Lord, you know, I usually get me, I double dose myself with this, um, as far as making a tea, I, I put honey in it. I drink it about every every few hours. I mean, I, I double dose myself. I put, I fill my, um, I fill my, uh, I forgot what this is called. It's, it's a coffee press, French, French press. And I don't ever use this for coffee. I use this for tea. And I put three or four tablespoons in here. I do not mess around when I'm drinking my tea. <laughs> and I just put this on there. I let it steep for about 10 minutes. And I just start, I fill this sucker up, boy, I tell you. And I drink it hard and heavy. And I'll put mullein and I'll put peppermint in here. And I will drink it. And the reason I do that is because I am ready to get well. And I am just sweating it out. You know what I'm saying? I drink it hot. I open up my lungs. And sometimes I will just do my, my tinctures every two to three hours. Put this underneath my tongue. And um, I will do my vitamin C tablets and my zinc. And I'm ready to get well. And usually within uh, the first day, I start feeling better immediately. And then two to three days later, I feel 100% better. But echinacea has such wonderful properties. And I talked to some people, and of course, some people need more. And so that's when they need to start calling on help because you know, you have to get your bowels movement. You have to be drinking tons of water. You have to start drinking and um, flushing the liquids through your body. I hear people that drink Coke, that drink uh, lots of sugar, lots of uh, things that should not be allowed in the body, especially at a time like this. And, um, well, I'll just tell you this. You're not going to get well with all that stuff going on in your body. Um, there is a lot of things that can help you. Like, I know a lot of people that say, um, you know, I'm not getting better. I'm not getting better. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And there's some things that you can do to help increase the oxygen in your body. And that is... Um, get up and walk around even if you have to call for help you need to get up and walk around and raise your arms and get the uh, uh, peppermint oil in in rub it in your chest and don't put it up in your nose uh, the eucalyptus oil and put it in your chest and uh, raise your arms up and do things in a circular motion and uh, black organic oxygen is another good one that you, it's trace minerals and you might want to start taking it in small, tiny uh, dosages and drink a lot, of, a lot of water with that. Um, chamomile and school cap uh, tea can sometimes help uh, have it in a tincture, but... Uh, it can help your body rest, and then you have that going on on your chest, and it will uh, make you feel like you're getting enough oxygen as well. Always remember to contact your doctor. If you are using a pulse ox um, on your finger, and if you are going below 90, and if you're in the 80s, you do need to contact your doctor and um, get on some oxygen. But you do and you can um, prepare paperwork. Make sure that you do have some sort of paperwork prepared before you go to the hospital and that your wishes are written down on a uh, legal document. 
because a lot of people are going to the hospital nowadays and they don't have their medical wishes written down on a piece of paper. So please uh, make sure that you have all of your medical wishes written down on a piece of paper before you enter the hospital. And I'm just saying this because I know what I want done to myself before I go to the hospital and make sure that your family knows what your medical wishes are. All right, that's enough for today. <laughs> really, we just need to take care of one another. We need to love on one another. And we need to know how to take care of ourselves in our home. I'm working very hard and I am trying to get this stuff together. Um, I'm hoping to very soon, very short, have some classes to where people can sign up for some classes and they can learn how to take care of their loved ones in their home and they can learn how to get some of these herbs and they can learn how to grow these herbs in their backyard because we're living in a day and a time people where it's time that we learn how to love on one another and we learn how to grow these herbs and learn how to find the seeds and we learn how to say, hey, this isn't really that hard. And it's time that America wakes up and says, you know what? It's our grandparents did this, our great grandparents did this, and it's time that we do this. So y'all have a blessed day. And and for now, this is Rex Santa with Garden of Herbs. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.